So once you got a handle on just the generic head proportions, um, you'll need to begin to vary those proportions and make them specific to a person. Uh, or if you're doing character design, you know, just have a variety of ways that you can sort of modify that. And I'm just going to run through uh, like five, six examples of, of how to go about that. And you're going to stick to the proportions and the alignments, but just by varying some outer contour angles and maybe some rough inner, inner proportions and shapes for the mouth, eyes, nose, and ears, um, you're going to be able to create a great variety. And so the first head shape, um, you know, starts from the center of the circle and kind of comes down and the jaw is kind of square and flat. This one, um, I wanted to, to create kind of a pointier jaw. So the jaw aligns above that um, bottom division. Um, notice all the proportions kind of main, maintain, but that changes the um, angle greatly in the overall shape. And to kind of match that, I cut in on the skull and sort of made it more of a of an oval shape um, there. Here's another example and this one we're gonna do uh, a slightly different tack. Um, we're gonna create kind of sharp angles inward and align with uh, the line just below the mouth and you know get ears that are kind of closely flat in with the um, with the head, and then we're going to do kind of like a peaked top of the head, um, and so the the actual bend into the top of the skull begins above the halfway point of that circle. This one we're going to kind of make an overall sort of rounded boxy head, um, and we're still sticking with the same sort of proportions. But now we're kind of going from uh, a more angular approach to a little a little more rounded approach. The skull is kind of flat on top and the jaw is flat on bottom. And on this last one, we'll do kind of like this sort of superhero or supervillain sort of proportions with a huge wide jaw. Um, it doesn't even really look possible uh, until you get a neck in there. Um, but if you flare the if you flare the outer contour outwards, you can still have kind of the narrow point to the jaw and you can um, build a neck out and, and it'll start to sort of make sense and then if you flare outwards again you can kind of create something that looks reasonable and basically you can play around endlessly with this and all you're doing is you're varying the angle of the jaw and the width of the jaw you're varying the angle of the side of the head both above and below the eyes you can vary the top of the head and how that interacts. And you're also going to work on where those points sort of intersect. Like if you change the angles greatly, they're going to intersect at different heights and widths on the head. But you're still sticking with that proportional grid. And that's what's kind of the coolest thing about this method is that you're able to do a lot of variation while sticking to basics.